Before we actually do the math problems, the reason you do a lot of them is based on a LORA, which means as low as reasonably achievable. Your radiation dose is controlled by time, distance, and shielding. That's pretty self-explanatory. The more time you spend by a source, the more radiation you get. The more, the more distance between you and the source, the less radiation you'll pick up. And the more shielding you put between you and the source, the less radiation you get. That's all pretty self-explanatory. <clears throat> For dose time and dose rate calculations or conversions, dose is the key variable. And you may have to write these down 10, 20 times to get it stuck in your head, but you need to do it because this formula cannot be, uh, cannot be eliminated. And they will not tell you a formula on the test, so you have to know it. So dose is the key variable. If you're solving for dose, just multiply the other two variables. Dose is equal to dose rate times time. Now, since key, dose is the key, if you're solving for anything other than the dose, you always put dose on top of a fraction like we have it here. So, for an example, if we're solving for time, time is equal to put dose on top of the fraction. The only other possible variable you have is dose rate. So it plugs in on the bottom of the fraction. Also, if you're solving for dose rate instead, you have dose rate is equal to put dose always on the top of a fraction. If you're not solving for dose, the only other variable you can plug in is time. Let's do a few examples. <clears throat> and when we do these math problems, if you want to, as you repractice them, if you want to I'll try to pause enough for you to pause, put your DVD player on pause and work on it, and then you can play it and watch the answer. I wouldn't do it the first time you go through these. I just watch it, and as you repeat, you can do that. What's the dose if the intensity is 50 mR per hour for three hours? Dose is your key variable, so just multiply the other two numbers. Dose is equal to dose rate times time. The dose rate is 50. The time is 3. Multiply those together and you get an answer of 150. I really recommend writing these steps out step by step like this because it's very easy to make a mistake if you don't. The next problem, what is the intensity if the dose is 40 milligrams after two hours? In this problem we're looking for intensity, which is what? Dose rate. Dose rate is not the key variable, so you always put dose on top of the fraction. The only other variable is time. The dose is 40. The time is 2 hours. 40 divided by 2 will give you an answer. 20 is 20 milligrams after 2 hours. I mean, the dose rate was 20. Okay, and the next problem, if you... How long will it take to receive a dose of 100 milligrams if the intensity is 20 mR per hour? If you'd like to pause the tape, pause it now. Okay, that's solving for time, which that's not your key variable, so put dose on top of a fraction. The only other one to plug in is dose rate. The dose is 100, and the dose rate is 20. 100 divided by 20 will give you 5 five hours. Now these example problems were in dose were in hours. If you're working with times less than one hour in minutes or seconds you have to have a correction factor. The reason you need a correction factor is because the dose rate is in measured in MR per hour. It's not in MR per second or MR per minute. It's an MR per hour so you have to add a correction factor or your, or your numbers will be wrong if you're less than one hour. The correction factor if your time is in minutes is 60 because there's 60 minutes to an hour. And the correction factor for seconds is 3600 because <clears throat> there's 60 seconds to a minute, 60 minutes to an hour. <clears throat> to add the correction uh, to a formula, you do the opposite of what you're doing in the formula. If you were multiplying the two numbers together like the dose formula, divide by the correction. But if you were dividing the two numbers in the problem, then multiply with a correction. It's the opposite. We'll look at that correction 
for minutes in the dose formula. The dose formula again, and that's your key variable, so we multiply the dose rate time time. We're multiplying here, so do the opposite, divide by the correction factor, and the correction factor for minutes is 60. Now, if it were seconds with the dose formula, again, dose is your key variable, dose rate is equal, uh, times time is equal to the dose. We're multiplying here, so divide by the correction factor, which is for seconds, 3,600. Now, uh, back to a correction factor for minutes for the dose rate formula instead of dose. Dose rate is not your key variable, so put dose on top of a fraction. The only other variable to plug in is time. <clears throat> You're dividing here, so you do the opposite with the correction. You multiply. Multiply that by 60. That's for minutes. If it were seconds, same thing. Dose rate is equal to dose over time. You're dividing, so multiply by, but it's 3,600 for seconds instead of minute, instead of 60 for minutes. Now for the time formula, the, for minutes correction, time is not your key variable, so put dose on top of a fraction. The only other thing to plug in is dose rate. You're dividing in this problem, so multiply by the correction factor, and that's minutes, so it's 60. Same thing for time formula, but seconds is the same thing as time is equal to dose over dose rate. You're dividing in this problem, so multiply by the correction factor, which in seconds is 3,600. Let's do a few examples. What is the dose? if the intensity is five and more per hour for 24 minutes. We're looking for dose, so it's dose rate time time, that is our key variable. Dose is equal to five, the dose rate is five times 24, the time is 24 minutes, so it's five times 24, but that's minutes, so we have to add a correction factor. We're multiplying in the problem, so divide by the correction factor of 60 for minutes. Five times 24 equals 120, divided by 60 equals 2. <laughs> the next problem we'll do is for intensity. What is the intensity if the dose is 2 milligrams after 24 minutes? We're solving for dose rate. Intensity means dose rate. That's not our key variable, so we put dose on top of a fraction. The only other variable to plug in is time. The dose rate is equal to, the dose is 2, the time is 24, that is minutes again. So <clears throat> add a correction factor of 60. You're dividing in the problem, so multiply. Do the opposite with the correction factor. 2 divided by 24 is 0 0.08333, and it's rounded off to a lot of numbers. Just don't clear your calculator. Times 60 equals 5. The dose rate was 5. Okay, the next little example will work is for the time variable. How long will it take to get a dose of 2 milligrams if the intensity is 5 mR per hour? We're using the time formula this time, which is not our key variable, so dose goes on top of a fraction. The only other variable to plug in is dose rate. The dose in this problem is 2, the dose rate is 5. So with that by that, and we'll get since we're solving for time without adding a correction factor is 0 0.4 hours. That is less than one hour. So we can multiply that by 60 to get minutes. And we come up to 24 minutes. If you were still 0 point something, you can multiply by 60 again to get down to seconds. But we don't need to do that in this time. Okay, for shielding calculations, which have value layers. Now look, on the, on the, you don't try to memorize half value layers. It doesn't do any good. On the test, they'll have a chart. You have to use the numbers that's on their chart. There's a, sa a safe way to calculate it, but it's slower. I'll show you the example of it. If you have 100 MR per hour with four half value layers, we can write it out each step. Zero half value layers is the 100 that it gives you with no, before you take any shielding off. With one half value layer, it drops in half to 50. With two half value layers, it drops in half to 25. At three, you drop it in half again, it's 12.5. At 
four high value layers, that's 6.25. That's a safe way. It's pretty hard to screw this up. It's a lot of steps, so it slows you down. There is a cheat trick that you can do it really quick because usually it's not more than five, six high value layers when you're doing most calculations. The faster way to do it, but some people screw up because they don't count the right way. We'll use our fingers on a hand account. We'll pretend each one of our fingers is a half a layer of shielding. We'll start counting at two because what one half a layer of shielding would drop the radiation intensity in half. That two is our division factor. We have to double that each time, not count by two. Start counting at two and double each time. Don't count by two. If you find yourself counting by two, then go back and do it the safe way. We'll see your first finger is two mR per hour. I mean two, division factor of two. Double that number each time. Four, eight, sixteen. So if you have four high value layers of shielding, you can just divide by sixteen one simple time to get your answer. One hundred divided by sixteen is six point two five, which is what we have when we divide it by two four separate times. This is a little faster way, it, it saves a lot of trouble. It's easier to type in on your calculator. It's aggravating kind of typing in 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. Now sometimes on the test what they'll do is instead of telling you how many high value layers of shielding you'll have, they'll just tell you you have some thickness of a material. And you'll have to do an inverse square law or a shielding, you know, to figure out what the intensity would be. You'll have to look, in that case, at the front of the test. They'll have a chart telling you how thick a high value layer is for that material. If you want to know how many half value layers you have, you take the total thickness they're telling you of the material, divide it by the half value layer thickness on the chart. That'll tell you how many half value layers there are. It's pretty simple. For an example, let's say with steel and iridium-192. The half value layer thickness of steel, if you're using iridium-192, is a half an inch. So let's say if the question told you you have a total thickness of three inches of steel, what would be the intensity afterwards? You'd have to know how many half value layers that is to do the calculation, right? So the number of half value layers is equal to the total thickness divided by the half value layer thickness. Three is the total thickness divided by a half an inch equals six half value layers. Now we could calculate our, our problem now because we know how many half value layers there are. Sometimes on the test, though, instead of that, they'll ask you how much shielding would it take to drop the intensity from one big number down to a given smaller number. That one will really, really trick people. It's probably the hardest math on the state test, or it's the most confusing to people. There's two ways to do this. One of them's slow, but pretty easy, but it's just time consuming. One of them's harder, but it's really fast, and you have to have a scientific calculator for the hard way. The slow easy method is this, everybody can do this, this will be the slowest problem on the test that you have to work. You'll type in the big number and divide it by 2 and make your little count hash mark each time you divide by 2. So say an example problem, we say, and this was one on a test before, five, take 500,000 mR per hour and reduce it down, how much shielding would it take to drop it to 122 mR per hour? If you're going to know how thick the shielding would have to be, you have to know how many half value layers you have. So you would just type in 500,000 on your calculator, divide by 2, make yourself a little count mark. Divide by 2, make a count mark, divide by 2, make a count mark. After you do this 12 times, and if you want to try it on your own, you can just pause the tape now and do it. But when you do that 12 times, you should be then looking at 122 point a little left over, and they usually do have decimal points left over on the test. Don't worry about that. And so then you would go, you know, multiply 12 half value layers times the half value layer thickness that tell you how thick the shielding was. The, the, everybody understands that part. The problem they have is figuring out how many half value layers there, there was. This is really simple to do this. Just divide by two and make a little mark so you don't lose count. And, Start at the big number and just go until you get to the bottom number. It's real easy, it's just time consuming. There is a faster method which is much more complicated. You have to have a scientific calculator. So if you don't, you don't want to do that, just don't worry about this part. But say if you have a scientific calculator, you're really good at the math and you want to try this way, you can try it. You have to have a scientific calculator. It has to have a log button, which means logarithm. It'll look like this. First step in that is you just take the big number 
and divided by the small number. So in the example we gave before, 500,000 divided by 122 will give you 4098.36, this big number rounded off of. That's what your calculator will show. But before you do anything else, push the log button. Now your calculator is going to display 3.6126 blah blah blah. Okay, so now we're going to divide it by the logarithm of 2. So we hit divide by, hit the 2. Do not hit the equal yet. Before you hit equal, you have to push the log button. Your calculator is going to display 0 0.301 something now. Now you can hit the equal button. And it's going to say 12.000 some number. Round it off a little over 12. That is the number of half value layers. Remember when we made the 12 hash marks. This is a faster way to do it if you understand that. You're taking the logarithm, you divide the two numbers together, the big number by the little number, you take the logarithm of that and you're dividing by the logarithm of two. If you understand that and you have a scientific calculator and you want to do that, it can speed the test up a lot because if they have five or six of those problems, this is a lot faster. The simple way is to just divide it by two, make the little hash mark and keep counting. It's real easy to do it that way. This was a trick if you want to do it this way. Distance calculations. When we talk about distance relating the radiation level to distance, we're talking about the inverse square law. The technical definition you need to be able to pick out on the test is the radiation intensity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance to the source. All that means is the distance factor is squared and that if the radiation number gets bigger, the distance is getting smaller. If the distance is getting bigger, the radiation is getting smaller. It's the opposite. <clears throat> now for the dose formulas, we had a formula we were using. In this one, we won't use a formula. We're just going to use a sketch. First, we'll put a little uh, representation of a star there, which is supposed to be the source and radiation coming out. And we're going to mark two locations. X marks the spot, location one and location two. One of them is closer to the source than the other one. At one of these locations, you can measure a radiation level at the, and you can also, there's some distance number to go there. At the other location, there's a different radiation level and a different distance number. We'll use a sketch to help. The problem of the sketch originally was to uh, solve the, the inverse square law problem. I mean, the word problem of the inverse square law. Most people mess up solving the word problem more than they do the numbers, but you can also get the answer right from the sketch. But to set up the sketch, you have there's three distinct steps. The first one, you look for a key variable. Like, what is the intensity? That tells you you're looking for a radiation level, not a distance. If you're looking for a radiation level, that means that one of the, the radiation levels is going to be blank. We don't know. We don't care right now. So the step two is fill in the two known variables, which means I'll know both of the distances. So does it give me two distances directly in the problem? Yes, it does. It gives me 50 and 25. And you know which one goes where because 25 foot is closer to the source than 50 feet. Okay, the last step is match a remaining variable. Does it tell me one of the radiation levels? Yes, it does. It says there's 100 mR per hour. And how do I know where it goes? It says 100 mR per hour where? At 25 feet. So it goes above the 25, with the 25. That solved the word problem for you. Now, it just so happens you don't need a formula. You can just get the answer from here. There's three distinct steps for that. First one is to square the distances. Square means to multiply a number by itself. So 25 times 25 is 625 now. 50 times 50 is 2,500. That's the first step out of the way. The second step, at one of these X mark locations, there's always going to be two numbers filled out at one of them, and at the other X mark location, there's only going to be one number filled out. Go to the one where both numbers are known, and that's another reason we use the X's to mark the spot as X means multiply. So at location one now, we, at the closest to the source, we have both numbers filled out. So 100 times 625 is going to equal 62,500. 
The remaining last step is to divide by the remaining variable. You're jumping across now, so do the opposite again. Divide by the remaining variable. So 62,000 divided by 2,500 will give you on your calculator 25. That is the answer. Now, we solve for a radiation level in that, in that problem. Let's do one solving for distance instead. You'll have to use the solve for distance the square root button on your calculator. You didn't need that scientific calculator to do the other trick earlier, but you do absolutely need a square root button. Let's do an example. This question states, at what distance will you get 5 or more per hour if you get 20 or more per hour at 40 feet? I'm going to give you a second to pause the tape in case you're repeating this and you want to work it. Okay. We're solving for distance this time, so fill in the radiation levels. It gives me 20 and 5. Now, this one's the opposite. The closer you get to the source, the bigger the radiation number is. So 20 mR per hour is closer to the source than 5 mR per hour is. Now match the remaining variable. Does it give me a distance directly? Yes, it does. It tells me 40 feet. Where does the 40 go? It's at 20 mR per hour. So there it goes with the 20. Now you've set up the sketch, the word problem solved. So now to get my answer, I can square the distances. 40 times 40 is 1,600. There was no uh, number to square at the second location, so make yourself a square root symbol or some kind of note to, at the end of the problem, hit square root button. So go back to the location where you know two numbers, multiply them together, 20 times 1,600 is equal to 32,000. And the third step is to divide by the remaining variable, so 32,000 divided by 5, hit the equal button on your calculator, will show you 6400. That is your answer squared. You're going to have, it's not your actual answer. So hit the square root button and it will display 80 now. And that is your correct answer. The only difference there was you made yourself a note at the end you hit your square root. So you had 6400 displayed when you hit equal. You just hit the square root button. That changed it into the correct answer is 80. Now we've been doing these where I tell you all three numbers and you just plug them into the form. And in real life, you don't, it's very rare that you do that and not that often on the test. Generally, you just know how many curies you have and you want to calculate what either how far you would have to go to get some radiation level or are at a given distance what the radiation level would be. To do that, you always have to go to your presumed one foot distance and use the characteristic intensity, which is how many, is like for iridium 59 or 5200 mR per hour at one foot away per curie. The real number is 5200 mR per hour per curie at one foot away, but since we're studying for the state test on this video, and the state test uses 5,900, we'll use 5,900 for these problems. That's because each curie always will give us that number at one foot away. So here's a more typical problem, and for, to keep it from the, the re, uh, being hard to read or having the board all cluttered up, presume all these are iridium instead of cobalt. Now, what is the intensity 50 feet from 90 curies of iridium? And if you're reworking this and you want to pause the tape now, you can pause it and um, try to work it and then start again and you can watch me work it out. Okay. What is the intensity 50 feet from 90 curious? We're going to need our sketch again. The key variable we're asking for is what is the intensity? So that means I'm looking for a radiation level, so fill in the distances first. It tells me 50 in the foot in the problem. It doesn't tell me the other one directly, but I know I always know how to go back to my one foot. So 50 and one feet. Now, match the remaining variable. It doesn't tell you a radiation level directly in the problem, but it tells you how many curies there are. 
90 curries times 5,900 will tell you the dose rate at one foot away. 90 times 5,900 equals 531,000. Plug that in for the radiation level at one foot. Now this has solved the word problem and set up the sketch. Now we can get the answer and find out what the answer to the problem would be. First step for doing that, square your distances. There's two numbers to square this time. So one time one is still one. 50 times 50 is 2,500. Now I'll go to the location where the two numbers are both known. 531,000 times one is still going to equal 531,000. The last step is divide by the remaining variable. So 531,000 divided by 2,500 will give me an answer of 212.4. And that is my answer. Okay, let's solve a distance problem this way. At what distance will you get 2 mR per hour with 75 curies of iridium-192? If you want to pause the tape now, pause it and try it on your own. Okay. Let's get our little sketch back. At what distance tells me I'm solving for a distance. So fill in the radiation levels first. Okay, the problem tells me the 2 mR per hour. I'll have to calculate what the other intensity is at one foot. I have 75 curies, multiply that by 5900 for my characteristic intensity. That tells me I have 442,500 mR per hour at one foot. The last step is matching that remaining variable which it didn't tell you directly in the problem, but we knew that it was at one foot. That's why we multiplied it by 5,900. Okay, so we've set up the sketch, solved the word problem. Now we can just go ahead and get the answer. First step to doing that, square the distances. One time one is one. There isn't a, uh, there's nothing to square at the other distance, so what do I do? I make a, myself a note that I have to hit square root at the end. That's important. That's when you, how you know when you have to hit square root or you don't. This time I didn't have anything to square, so I'll make myself the note that I'll have to hit the square root button at the end. So now, I multiply the two numbers together at the location where they're both known. So 442,500 times 1 equals 442,500. Now, the last step is divide by the remaining variable. 42,500 divided by 2 and hit my equal button will tell me 221,500 is what my calculator is going to be displaying now. That is my answer squared, not the true answer. So hit the square root button and that will change that number now to 470.37 and that is my answer. Now, sometimes you have shielding in the problem when you're doing an inverse square law problem. We talked about shielding a little earlier, but we can do it in conjunction with an inverse square law problem. Let's do one with a collimator. Collimator is the most common shielding you deal with because you use it all the time. For iridium-192, the average collimator is four half value layers. So what is the intensity at 50 foot from 80 curies of iridium with a 4 high value layer collimator. If this is the second time you're going through the tape, you can pause it now and pick it up in a minute. Okay. First, the way, but you, there's, you can do this in the middle of the problem. The way I like to tell everybody to do it, you get it done right off the bat and it makes, then the problem goes back to just like the simple, like we did before. Just get rid of the shielding off the curies right off the bat. You can take it off the curies or off the MR per hour later. I like to get it off now before I even start the problem and then I don't even have to think about it. So let's scratch 80 curies off. We don't have that anymore. 
Now, how much would we reduce that by for four high value layers? If you remember earlier the little trick I showed you with the hand, the safe way to do it would be divide by two, divide by two, divide by two, divide by two. I want to do it in the one step. Count on your fingers, four fingers there. I start with two, two, four, eight, 16. The division factor is 16 for four half value layers. So 80 curies divided by 16 equals five. So now I'll put five instead of 80 in my problem. Now I just work the problem like, it, like I always have been working it, but it's five curies now instead of 80. So now I just start working the problem like I always, put my little sketch back up. I ask myself, what's, what's the key variable? What am I asking for? It says, what is the intensity? That's the radiation level, so I'm going to put the two distances in. The problem only tells me the 50 foot, and I'll presume the other one is 1 foot, so 1 foot and 50 foot. Next step, match the remaining variable. It doesn't tell me any intensities in the problem, so I have to take my five curies now and figure out what the intensity is at one foot. Five curies times 5,900, which is the per curie at one foot, equals 29,500. That is the intensity at one foot. Plug it in here. That was five curies times 5,900. Now the sketch is all set up. I'm just ready to get my answer now. First step when getting your answer is to square the distances. 1 times 1 is 1. 50 times 50 is 2,500. Okay, now I go to the location where both numbers are known and multiply them. So 29,500 29, times 1 is still equal to 29,500. Last step, third step. Divide by the remaining variable. So my 29,500 divided by 2,500 will give me 11.8, and that's the answer. So the intensity 50 feet away from 80 curies with a 4 high valley collimator on it is 11.8 MR per hour. Now, the main other option you have is to do a dose inverse square law problem with a dose to, or dose rate conversion in the middle of the problem. The most common one you'll do is convert the dose rate into a dose to do a barricade calculation. Let's do an example like that. At what distance will you get a dose? And the key there is that it's a dose, not a dose rate, a dose of two milligrams. We've been dealing with dose rates up till now. But at what distance will you get a dose of two milligrams with 100 curies and 20 minutes of exposure. If you don't know the minutes or the time frame, you can't calculate what the dose would be. So that part is critical. If you're repeating this tape and you want to stop it now, go ahead and pause. Okay. Let's put our little sketch down. And it's saying at what distance. So that's a distance I'm looking for. Let's fill in the two radiation levels. The problem already tells me a dose of 2 milliram. That's the dose at the far away location. Now I have to calculate the dose at 1 foot because it doesn't tell me anything else in the problem. Don't put the intensity at 1 foot in the first location. We're going to have to take the intensity at 1 foot and convert it into a dose. Now that we know what the intensity at 1 foot is since we know the curies. 100 curies times 5900 will tell is 590,000. That's the dose rate at one foot. Let's convert that to a dose. Let's write our little dose formula down. Dose is my key variable. So we multi just multiply the other two. Dose is equal to dose rate time time. Let's plug in our numbers. The dose rate we just calculated, 100 curious time, 5,900, will give me the dose rate at one foot, which is 590,000. Plug in the time. The time is 20, and that's minutes. So we'll have to add that correction factor of 60 since it's minutes. We were multiplying in the problem, so you do the opposite with the correction. Divide it by 60. 590,000 times 20 will be 11,800 over 60, 800,000 over 60, which equals 196,666.666666, whatever, 7. It's a long number. You can round it off quite a bit. 
that is the dose at one foot. So we put it at location one. Matching the remaining variable was one foot. That was the dose at one foot. So now we've solved the whole word problem. Let's just solve the problem and get the answer now. Square the distances. One times one is one. There's nothing to square at the second location, so that reminds you to make a note to hit the square root at the end of the problem. Okay, so now we go to the location where both numbers are known and multiply those together. 196,666 point whatever divided by 1 equals 196,666.6 whatever 7 had depending on how many she calculated rounds all. Now, the last steps divide by the remaining variable. That number divided by 2. Hit my equal sign will give me 98,333.3. That is my answer squared, not the true answer. So now I have, and that's why I have the note there to hit the square root button. So if I hit the square root button, it's going to divide, uh, display 313.58, and that is the correct answer. All I did there at the end was hit the square root button. That was 313 now, feet, 0.58 feet. And that's really all of the steps. We went through them quickly, but this is intended for you to watch as many times as you need to and to use the example problems in the book to practice. Again, please don't copy this. And that's it.